Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Fair and Wrestling 411. I'm your host, Gary Holden. With me, of course, head wrestling coach, Nate Yetzer. Nate, hey, Gary. welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the last time we, we spoke a couple weeks ago, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the first couple weight classes right. and the schedule and everything. This time, we're going to begin with uh, going through the next couple weight classes, yeah. 149, 157, and 165. Let's right. jump right into it. What do you got at 149? Uh, well, we, uh, we have a lot of returners there, um, and we got some guys that are, that are dropping down to there. But, um, you know, we brought in uh, one guy, Brandon Voros, from uh, Smithfield High School in, in, in Virginia. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Northern Virginia. Absolutely, yep. yep. And, and uh, you know, Brandon comes from a great background. Smithfield's obviously got a great, you know, great tradition of wrestling and, and uh, you know, hard worker, and, and I think he brings a lot to the table. I mean, he's got, he needs a little bit of development, but... Um, and I think that's what we do a really good job of here. Sure, here. sure, so, absolutely. Yep. So, and we're just talking mainly about the newcomers. At some point in time, later, yeah, yeah, later in the show, it. we'll talk a little bit more about all the returners. So, right. Uh, all right, let's bump up to 157. Yeah, we brought in a lot of a lot of talent here, and you know, we, we th these three weights, uh, 49, 57, 65. We needed a lot of depth, um, so we brought in a lot of good kids, a lot of quality kids, and. Uh, you know, with you know, with the foresight that I know, like some of them, are all, all of them shaped a little different. They're, I think they're all going to kind of grow into different weight classes, mm -hmm. which is um, which is important, obviously. But uh, 57, um, we're loaded there. You know, Justin Guy uh, from Bartlett Yancey High School in, in uh, North Carolina was state runner up last year, and mm -hmm. um, super athlete, hard worker, loves wrestling. Um, so I think he brings a lot to the table. Um, Elijah Martin from Union Pines High School in North Carolina um, was a third place finisher last year at the state tournament, North Carolina. Um, Controversial call in the semifinals, cost him a trip to the finals, which I think he had a really good shot of winning it. And, and uh, just um, hard worker, great kid, great background. Um, I think he, he'll bring a lot to the table, too. And, and uh, I think both those guys, Justin and Elijah, are ready to step in and contribute right away. I notice you're dipping down into North Carolina. North yeah, Carolina absolutely. It yep. seems like a little bit more. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, I think um, I mean, it makes sense. It's close enough. And uh, I think there's a lot of talent down there. And um, a lot of high schools that wrestling, you know, I think there's like over 400 high schools that rest down there. Wow. So it's a, it's a big wrestling state. Um, Gally Kissel um, from, you know, out in the beach area in Virginia. And, mm -hmm. and uh, he's around away from placing at prep nationals last year. And, and uh, a big, strong kid who I think is going to get bigger and bigger and loves lifting. And um, he's a power lifter, too, as well. So i um, really excited about him. Um, I think... Uh, you know, he's very talented and, and uh, you know, just going to be a good, it was a good get for us. So I'm excited okay. by him. Power lifters are probably good for wrestling, Yeah, right? yeah, you explosive know. and, yep. and uh, you know, good hips on him and he'll be, he'll be, uh, he'll be hard to match up against. So. You'll, you'll probably have trouble keeping him out of the weight room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, and then 65, we brought in a slew of kids too, some really good kids. Uh, Trey Passmore from Herndon High School up mm -hmm. in Northern Virginia. It was third place finisher last year and um, we got on him kind of late. Um, you know, I actually, we actually, my assistant saw him out the, the Virginia State tournament, lost in overtime to a really good kid, um, and kind of unheard of a little bit. A Trey was, and uh, we got on him a little late, and, and uh, been very, very impressed with him. Super talented, hard worker, very respectful, coachable. Um, I'm really, really high on Trey. Um, uh, Isaac Hudson, a kid from Oscar Smith, who obviously you know has got a really uh, Be proud Be tradition. Beach, uh, yep. Virginia Beach area. Yep. yep, loves lifting too, so I, I foresee him getting bigger as well too. And, and uh, hard worker, and, and uh, you know finishes in the top two or three at every run. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Which for a guy that size is really good. So mm -hmm. I'm excited about him. Uh, Lucas Nice, from, uh, also from Chesapeake uh, area. Um, he's from Grassfield High School. Was a fourth place finisher, I believe, um, at this, the Virginia State tournament, third or fourth. Um, you know, super competitive and awesome personality, I think, you know, and obviously we talk about, you know, everybody brings a little something different to the team. Sure. Um, I think Lucas is a pretty positive kid and, and uh, very sociable and, and uh, hard worker. And, and uh, I think he's just kind of now hitting the scratch on the surface of how good he can be. Really? Technically good. and. Um, it just needs to continue to get stronger and, and more developed. So it'll be interesting to, to look back in two or three years at this conversation we're having right. here and, and see how how yeah. we, you know how, what your Absolutely. predictions were for some of these kids. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. What, what else you got at sixty five? Uh, and then uh, Caleb Davis, who we brought in from Northumberland, uh, Virginia, um, four time state placer in Virginia, and, and uh, um, always real close to, to winning it. And, and uh, you know, one thing I look for in kids is kids that are unfulfilled. You know, and all these kids maybe fell short of their goal of being a state champion mm -hmm. um, or, or, you know, a national prep placer. And um, so I'm excited about all these guys. I think they're still really hungry. And um, Caleb's another kid, big, strong kid. He's going to do really well. I've known Caleb since he was, I think, a seventh or eighth grader. He used to come to our camps. Really? So, okay. Yep. Yep. So these kids, um, some of these kids at 65 potentially could be sliding up some of the 50s. Yeah, absolutely. It could be as soon as this year. You know, yeah. I mean, I think, it, you know, because 
seventy four is something you know. Not, not we're not real deep there, and so I, I could I could see some of these guys going up to seventy four. Mm -hmm. So. I remember when I was coaching up in New Hampshire, we'd have kids come in, and they wanted to be one <coughs> weight class. I had one kid come in one year, the one the weight class was like, it was 118, 125, or one, yeah, 126, and then 134, and the kid was 34 pounder. He was making weight the first two or three months of the season, and then all of a sudden, he was having trouble. Came back from Christmas break, struggling badly, and by the end of the year, he was having trouble going, making 150. Yeah. And he had yeah. not gotten fat. He was chiseled. He just, yeah, you know, he just, just, and he was so upset about it. I said, hey, you're not done growing. Right, yeah. God, God yeah, had absolutely. a different plan for you, just yeah. because you graduated from high school doesn't mean Absolutely. you stop growing and everything. So. I, I think, you know, wrestling, you know, and I think it has gone this way, but get out of that mindset of being, uh, that you always have to cut weight, you know. Right. And I think I, in my career, I made a decision after my redshirt year, I wrestled 49, and then I went at 57 about halfway through the year when I was redshirted because I felt, you know, I was growing a little bit. And then the next year, my uh, redshirt freshman year, I dropped down to 49 again. I uh, was a starter for the first couple of events, and I was just having no success. And I hated wrestling because I was just cutting so much weight, right, and right. Uh, my, my my study, my grades suffered, and all that. So I decided to, um, you know, I decided to go up and uh, you know wrestle what kind of what I weighed, you know, cut a little bit, but not much. And um, you know, two years later, I'm being an All American at 174. Wow. So, uh, but you know, it was a lifestyle change. I lifted a lot of weights and, and uh, ate better and. Um, did it the right way, you know, and it was hard, but you know, it, I think uh, for me, it, it made me love the sport again, and, and uh, mm -hmm. so I think, you know, some some kids, you know, it drives people out of the sport if they always if they're always worried about cutting weight instead right. of getting better in the room every day, you know. And, uh, but there's a fine line. You got to be you got to be lean and, and uh, strong for the weight, you know, mm -hmm. to, to be competitive, right. you know. So it's uh, it was more of a lifestyle change, you know, putting the right stuff in your <coughs> body, and it's something I harp on every day in practice. You know, you got to do the, do the right things, and everything else kind of falls falls into place. Logan Meister did something like that, didn't he? Right. Yep. Moved up two weight classes. Forty one to fifty seven, he became yep. an all American. Yep. And, it, and, and he really, I mean, he got better as he went up because I think he was more focused on getting better at wrestling, and, and uh, you know, very obviously very smart guy. Right. And, um, you know, I think he focused on that part of it, and, and uh, not not so much the cutting weight. Um, Obviously, I think early on in his career, he had to cut a little weight just to be competitive because he sure. was small. And mm -hmm. um, but I think once he buy on the weight training part and the diet part, he, you know, he had a lot of success. Yep. So. And he had some good success too. Absolutely. Yep. Say so your best wrestle that you've had come through this program. Yep. Yep. One of them. Yep. For sure. So. All right. Let's talk a little bit about um, your uh, f uh, your fall fundraising. Right. Right. Yeah. So we're having a um, we're having a fall fun drive right now. We do it every year around this time. It usually lasts between three and four weeks, and we send out mailings and uh, you know basically just. Um, you know, different different levels of giving. Um, and if anybody's interested in that, you know, they can feel free to reach out to me. Um, How to get people get in touch with you? Just uh, they, they can email. email me. Yeah, n n y e t uh, z e r at ferum dot edu. Okay. So and we're all over. Edu. Yeah, we're all over Facebook and, and Twitter and all that. But yeah. um, it's a great way for our guys to be able to do some of the things that we want to do. As far as you know, for us to be a competitive program, and the big in the landscape of things, you know, it. it uh, you know, obviously you need financial assistance, you know, sure. and, and so um, we were, we're going down to the Citrus Invitational again down in Florida, mm -hmm. going out to Chicago for the Pete Wilson Invitational. And Two big tournaments. Absolutely. And, and, you know, but there's a cost to that, you know, they're expensive, sure. obviously. And, um, you know, this is uh, just a way for us to be able to continue to do those things and give our guys a great experience. Nice. So, yep. Talk a little bit about the uh, black and gold matches. So you've got that yeah. uh, coming up here on November first. Which yeah. is that, that the inter squad scrimmage? Yep, that's our inter squad match. You know, this year we usually uh, we usually like on Thursday night we'd have like kind of the preliminary matches and matched up the top two guys. This year we're just going uh, we're just going to have one big one big event and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be everybody wrestling. Um, everybody's going to get at least one or two matches. Um, it's you know and, and guys are going to weigh in. It's going to be you know it's exhibition obviously, but um, it's a great way for our guys to kind of see where they are and. and uh, um, as we enter the season and being down the weight, all that stuff's really important. Kind of a dry run to where they it's are. It's good for so. the fans as well. Officials, right, yep. everyone gets to you know, have a practice run at it. It's everything. probably one of our biggest attended events, actually, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Because no starters have been named yet. Everyone's still in the mix. Exactly. Everybody's still in the, still mix, in the so. mix. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's a fun event. And, um, you know, obviously it's free to come to. And, and uh, so and, and we'll probably, I think last year we streamed it. I'm not sure we're going to do that again. We'll see, I guess. But um, you know, more information that will be coming out soon. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. Great, great. What else we got? No, uh, that's about it. You know, we have a homecoming coming up here in, uh, I guess, less than a month. And uh, we're going to have our, our homecoming tailgate again down in Bassett Field. And, um, you know, we're going to have an open practice. People can come watch and, and uh, you know, and, and see where we're at. And, 
you know, make the judgment on themselves, I guess, whether how, how good we're going to be this year. So that's Saturday, October 12th. You'll, yep. be, you'll be in official practices yep, yep. by then. October so 10th, the start, official start day. Yep. yep, so, yep. So, so we're toying with the idea of maybe having something outside, you know, put some mats outside and, you know, so fans can you get more fans. Obviously, our rest room is hard so to fit. So fans, fans can jump in and wrestle, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, they got a USA wrestling card, right? <laughs> no, but... Uh, um, yeah, so it'd be great, just it'd be a great event to see where our guys are, and, and uh, I'm excited about it. So. Great, great. Well, so the next time we um, we talk, we're going to be talking about your final four weight classes, correct? Right, yep. We'll be talking about 174, 184, 197, and 285. Right. And I'm excited to see what you got for the big men coming through Yeah, here. absolutely. We got you know great great group of guys coming in for that, those weights as well, too. You know, obviously, 57 on up, you know, that was a big, huge target weights we needed to attack this year, and I, I believe we did a really good job. Because you graduated those. a lot. Right, absolutely. So, yep. And then this year, we're swinging it back down low. So, yeah. yep. Yeah. All right. Well, Coach, thanks again for being with yeah, us. Thanks, Gary. Folks, that's, the, that's it today for Fair Wrestling 411. I'm your host, Gary Holden. For Nate Yetzer, thanks for being with us, and have a great day.